So let's embed a map from Google on our Divi website. And we are going to do it the easy way. So you won't have to use a Google account or, or add your uh, credit card information or having a Google API. We're just going to embed it the easy and smooth way. And we're going to add some hover effects like this. It's in color when I hover. And we're going to use this nice overlapping design with the background as well. Okay, so we head back to our development site and let's start by adding a new section by clicking the blue plus and it's a regular one. And let's add a single row with a single column. So in Divi, there's a module called the map module. And this is actually a pretty nice module. You can add several pins and you can have information when you click the location, so you can style it in different ways. But the problem is that Google have made some changes, making this kind of hard to work with. You have to have a Google account, you have to add your credit card, and if you would have lots of displays, you have to pay Google some money. And uh, even if you fill out these things correctly, there's often some trouble, so you will see this error sign. So I've given up on this a while ago, and uh, luckily there's a much more simple way to do it. So let's close this one and just delete this map module and click the plus sign to add a code module. And if you're not a coder, don't worry, I will show you all the steps. It's really easy. So the Divi code module is a really nice feature. You can add simple code and then you can use the Divi style settings from the Divi builder to style it. So it's, it's a really good combination of the good old code and the easy to use visual builder settings. So let's start by going to Google. Oops, not google.com, google.com and so for Google Maps. And when you're at Google Maps, just search for the location that you want to display in your map. Uh, I can say Avicii Arena in Stockholm could be my office. Well, one could always dream. So when you have found your location, you can simply click the share button. And there you have a tab called embed a map. And uh, there you have the code that we need. So click copy HTML. And that's actually it. You don't even have to be logged in to Google to do this. So we go back to our site and we will paste this code in the DV code module like that. And now you can see that the map is visible and there are no error messages. And we don't even have a Google API key. So it's pretty nice looking, but not as nice looking as I would like it to be. I would like to have it full width. So then I have to dig a little bit in the code here and I can see that Google gave me the width 600 pixels. So let's change that to 100 pixels. Sorry, 100% instead, making the width dynamic. So now it matches my row width. So I could also change the height. So maybe I would like to have it like 600 oops, pixels high. So there we have it. Okay, looks pretty good. But what if I would like to have it even wider like this? Yeah, that's pretty easy to do too. So I'll just head into the row settings because that's what's limiting the width right now and clicking the cogwheel, going to design and I go to sizing. Now I can set a max width of maybe 1600 pixels and I can set it to width 90%. And suddenly it's wider. And it looks really nice. Okay, so the next step is to fix this gray or black and white map on idle and when I hover it it's in color. I think this is this is a nice effect and we also have a small shadow effect here so let's fix that. I go to the code module settings and uh, let's hit the design tab and we'll start with the hover effect. So I go to the filters view, and if you checked the early chapters in this course, you know how to do this. 
So the saturation, I will drop that down to zero. And now it's in grayscale. And now I will click the hover icon, the mouse pointer, and I will activate the hover mode. And now we move this one back to 100% on hover, so 100% saturation, and now it's in color. So this is how it looks in idle, grayscale, and this is how it looks in uh, hover mode. Okay, and then we have the box shadow. So I will just browse, uh, scroll up here to box shadow, and we can add this one. And now we have a nice box shadow on our map. And we can actually change this box shadow on hover if you want to. So I can just take the box shadow blur strength. I click the hover icon and I increase it to 80 on hover. So now the map will lift a little bit from the surface when I hover it. Perfect. And then we have the last styling trick here, which is this one, the uh, overlapping design, which looks really nice, I think. So there are a few ways to achieve this. The most common one would be to use negative margin. So we could select this row, design, spacing, and then set like a ne negative margin to, to minus 200 pixels. The problem is that there could be some overlapping effects and you have to increase this uh, margin or this padding uh, to compensate and that could be a little bit tricky to make it look good on all uh, screen sizes. So I will sh show you another trick so you don't have to mess around with this section at all. So we go to the section settings for the map section and click the cogwheel. We go to background and we are actually going to use a gradient for this. So I will add a background gradient. This looks pretty far from this, but soon you will understand where I am heading. So the first color should be the dark gray and the second color should be white like that. Okay, so now I go down and the gradient direction is fine. It's dark to light, 180 degrees from left to right. But I set the starting position to 33% and the end position to 33%. And now you can see that the dark background color stops at one third of the area and then it's white. So this is a really quick and nice trick to make overlapping design that's not really overlapping. It just looks like that and you don't have to mess around with the uh, sections surrounding this one. So last but not least, let's have a brief look on how to mobile optimize this map. And we're going to use the responsive content feature in the DV Builder for that. So I will open the code module. And uh, you remember that we did set the width and height of the map in the uh, iframe code here. So to change this, I can use responsive content. And this is something different from responsive design because in the design tab, I can set different, for example, text sizes or alignment by clicking this one. But in Divi, we have the same setting for the actual content. So this is available in the text module and the image module, etc., etc. So, so you can add a different text or, or a different background image, etc., for different device sizes. So this is really powerful. So in this case, I want to have another height in a mobile because if we click this responsive content icon and we preview it in phone, we can see that the map might be a little bit too high. So to change that, I'll simply change the HTML code here in the phone view to 400. And now the map is not that high anymore. And this could be changed for tablet as well. So maybe I just want it to be 500 pixels high here. And then we have the desktop, which is 600. So this is how you can use responsive content in the code module. It's a really powerful tool and I recommend that you try it out. Mm -hmm.